Whole interval recording, folks. It's a method for recording behavior. It's a really cool method for re 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 Whole interval, folks. It's a method for recording behavior. It's a really cool method for recording behavior, except for one flippin' thing. It underestimates, and here's why. An interval, when we go into recording, you break up a break up a large chunk of time into small chunks of time. So let's say an hour-long period, we're gonna break it up into minute-long sessions. For sake of the example, we'll do two minute-long sessions. Okay, here we go. So um, we got an hour. We're gonna break them up into two-minute intervals. Little Bobby is being naughty in classroom, uh, in the classroom. So the teacher wants you to find out how how naughty is Bobby being. So you decide, being a not so smart behavior analyst, um, to use a whole interval recording procedure, and you say, "All right, little Bobby, is you doing your shit?" And if little Bobby is doing his shit, um, you go, oh, he's got it for the first minute. He's been naughty. He's continuing to be naughty. He's continuing to be naughty. And if he's naughty for the whole two minute interval, you go, check mark. Yes, he was naughty. Right? So you get the idea. If he's naughty for a minute and 58 seconds, then you don't put the check mark, which is weird because he was naughty for a minute and 58 seconds. But you can't because you're using whole interval method. So uh, because it's not, didn't meet the entire interval, you didn't check the box, it's for duration type behavior. All right. So stuff that's recorded over a duration, not discrete trial type stuff. Uh, it's pretty cool, but uh, you got to just, you know, know when to use it.